Thank you, Slow Danger. That's Anna Thompson and Taylor Knight sharing Far Field, an incredible mesmerizing dance performance on film. Their work provides a deeper understanding of energy, synergy, gender, time, and storytelling. And the music you were listening to in the stage area, if you were like me, I was dancing a lot, is the creation of Inez, one of our finalists tonight. Thank you, Inez, thank you for making us dance. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. It is my pleasure to welcome you all tonight to the 2021 Carol R. Brown Creative Achievement Awards. I'm Joseph Hall, Executive Director of Kelly Strayhorn Theater, and it is my absolute honor to be your MC tonight. Thank you for being with us. Before we begin, I'd like to share a land acknowledgement. What we call Pittsburgh is the traditional, ancestral and unceded land of indigenous people, specifically, though not exclusively, the Osage Nation. The process of knowing and acknowledging the indigenous history of the land we stand, live, work, protest and play on is a way of honoring and expressing gratitude for indigenous people past, present and future. America was founded on the genocide of indigenous people and capture of their lands. And this country is still working to repair the practice of enslaving African and indigenous people. I offer this acknowledgement as a way to ground our gathering on this land, in this virtual world, in an honest and transparent context, allowing us to build a future that works to repair these deep and often overlooked aspects of our nation. There is nothing we love more at Kelly Strayhorn Theater than creating opportunities for meaningful connections between audiences and artists, our community and our friends. This past 18 months has been a challenge. It's been a challenging time for the art sector. And for that reason, we are especially grateful to have this opportunity to celebrate our region's artists with you tonight. This is a special night for all of us, all of us who love the arts and love Carol Brown. Tonight, we have the privilege to honor Carol's legacy and to celebrate her passion for the arts and the artists who make meaning of our shifting world. This evening, we uplift and we celebrate six artists who time and time again show courage to be vulnerable, to step up, to step out every time they share their art, their practice, their journey with us. We are so grateful for the ways they move, the ways they craft and conspire to imagine new futures, new possibilities for our entire region. This year, we had more than 170 publicly submitted nominees. That's right, more than 170. Our panelists spent hours reviewing each nomination and identified three finalists in each of our emerging and established artist categories. This is the first time we've had finalists for the award, and it is our honor to uplift and elevate the work of six amazing artists. Tonight, we learn who the awardee is in each category. You know this already, but it is a big night. I hope you feel it. As we move through the evening, Please enjoy videos about each finalist. The videos are heartfelt, moving, and inspiring. And they were created by two local artists, Josh Franzos and Ime Alaquiva. These, these videos share a glimpse into why these six artists were identified as having great impact in our region. All of the videos will be available on the websites of each host foundation following tonight's event. 
Please share the videos on social media, tag everyone, and uplift the amazing artists we are here to recognize tonight. Joining us this evening is Jessica Murphy from Steel City Interpreters, who will be providing ASL interpretation for our friends who are deaf or hard of hearing. Welcome, Jessica. We're glad you're here. You know, Thomas Merton said that art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. And Nina Simone said, an artist's duty is to reflect the times. The work of tonight's finalists certainly give proof to Merton and Simone's words. I'm excited to be here tonight. It is truly an honor. Now, grab that snack, sit back, and enjoy the evening. But wait, the emergency exits are, well, you know where the emergency exits are, and the restrooms are available at any time. We begin with a song from Henya, a performing artist, singer, percussionist, dancer, and teacher. Her music is infused by Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latin cultures. Her music reflects her infectious energy. Welcome, Henya. Gracias, Joseph. Soñar lo imposible, soñar. Vencer al invicto rival, soportar el dolor insufrible, morir por un noble ideal, saber enmendar el error, amar con pureza y bondad. Creer en un sueño imposible, con fe una estrella alcanzar. Ver aves volar, sabes lo que sentí, sol en el cielo, sabes lo que sentí. Brisa que acaricia, sabes lo que sentí. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life para mí. Y me siento bien. Peces en el mar, sabes lo que sentí. Ríos corren libres, sabes lo que sentí. Árboles que florecen, sabes lo que sentí. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life para mí. Y me siento bien. Una libélula al sol, a eso me refiero, yo no es así. Mariposas en diversión, a eso me refiero. Dormir en paz cuando el día termina, a eso me refiero. And this old world is a new world, and a old world para mí. Estrellas pandrillas, sabes lo que sentí. Aroma de pino, sabes lo que sentí. Hoy la libertad es mía, y eso es lo que sentí. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life para mí. Y me siento bien. Gracias. I first fell in love with dance when I went to church one time and my friend, he was sitting on a stage and he was doing something like this. He was, oh, he was stretching his leg up and his foot was pointed and I was like, what is that? So eventually I ended up talking to him and man, it just skyrocketed from there. I just kept taking classes, I kept uh, choreographing and kept like working on my body and just find it, trying to find out what dance was for me. Theodore Alexander, interview shall commence. For me, the original seed of my movement comes from music, comes from the rhythm, comes from uh, the harmonies inside some sort of rhythm. Whether that's a rhythm I'm making 
or a rhythm like from an instrument or from like recorded music, but it comes from a rhythm. That's the first thing it comes from. Dance isn't the first thing that comes to my mind. For me, the first thing that comes to mind is the universe, the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun gives life to everything and it gives life to me. So I feel like the sun shines on me and then it goes inside my skin and it's like little pockets of light that is trapped in there. But I'm here to plant that seed inside that soil of not knowing so that my tree can grow. Wow. Wow, thank you for that incredible video tribute to emerging artist finalist Theodore Alexander. I'm Jake Goodman of the Opportunity Fund, and it is our great pleasure to help make these awards possible with our friends at the Pittsburgh Foundation and the Heinz Endowments. Before we share the next two video tributes to Inez and Janelle Young with you, we'd like to give you a deeper look at Carol Brown and her commitment to art and artists. Take a look at this conversation I had with Carol a few weeks ago. Who oh, my love. It is such an honor to talk with you today. And I have to say that I met you, and I knew of you as a person before I knew of Carol R. Brown, the legend. And what I knew about you before I knew about all that you've done for Pittsburgh and beyond was you were a dear friend of my Aunt Jerry's and that you love art and you know a lot about art. I love the arts. In fact, I would say I'm passionate about the arts and always have been my whole life. I know you, you love new work and you follow it. You know so much about it. How do you learn about new artists, visual artists, performance artists? You have to be out and about, and that's all I can say. And you have to care deeply about knowing who the upcoming individual artists are. Uh, and they're so important to our community, so important to our community, to every community. Uh, and then you, you have to follow up on what you read about, what you hear about, and you have to get out there and see the art. You don't know until you've experienced it. When you first created these awards, and they didn't exist before. Were people confused? What, was, what were the conversations like when you said, this is what we are going to do? Yes, the first couple of years, I got a lot of funny questions. Uh, we, we had the award ceremony at the Byam Theater, which we had just bought the old Fulton. And, and, um, and a lot of people said, well, what, why are you doing this? And I mean, it was, it, was, it was funny. It was entertaining. But I'll tell you who never said, why are you, were you doing this, was the artists in our community. They understood that it was an important thing to do. It was small. It's still small. Uh, but it's the beginning of a, of a way to generate public recognition of the importance of individual artists. Done? That was beautiful, Carol. Oh. You're like a walking quote machine. Mm. No, that's, I feel very like it's awkward. Oh, well, but it worked. I'm awkward. You Thank sounded you. beautiful. No, you were great. You were. I think I was three years old, um, and it was like a Saturday morning. And for some reason, I don't know why, um, before our, our, our church service, my father's a drummer. He and I were both in the living room, and I flipped over at like a small garbage can, um, and I just was like, I just remember going at it. And like from that moment on, everything about music it just like, like pulled me in. And like since then, it's been in my heart and in my bones, and, and I just love it. I love it. Inez interview. Take one. Being able to pick up a guitar, being able to sit at keys, it's an extension of my communication. When I'm in the studio, I'm at home, there's no limitations, there's no expectations. It's a place where I try to not put pressure on myself, I just wanna create. The, the biggest thing for me is articulating an idea, um, but at the root of that idea is always a feeling. Welcome back to another episode of Girls Running. It's important for black women to occupy musical spaces because we are we're the, we are the mothers and without us things would not be. We've been here, we deserve our praise, we deserve our honor and we deserve our respect.
I hope and pray that throughout my entire journey that I'm worthy of all of it. Um, truly. Yeah. Twenty twenty started off pretty rough because of just the weight of everything that was happening in the world. Janelle Young, take one. I actually, you know, was talking to some other creative people who they felt like they were in a slump. I think I felt that way too. Out of 2020 came my coloring book, Color Your Crown, which people fell in love with because we were able to do virtual coloring parties and find another way to like connect again, right, through art. Um, a lot more live painting sessions just on social media became a thing, um, some other collaborations. So a lot of my greatest projects <laughs> to date came out of 2020. Um, I was part of the US Open exhibit that happened. Um, I was able to do a collaboration with um, Verizon Media for merchandise. And then that led to later doing the Black History Month logo for Yahoo. Um, it was just like a lot of things were kind of stirring up and I had the opportunity to do some mural projects, some really large uh, pieces of work that would then lead to other projects, you know? It was like a snowball effect. Collectively, we made it through. We figured out how to reconnect with each other in a different way that was still gonna let us be who we are, be who we are. Mm. This is one of those nights where I'm just like, mm, incredible, my gosh, Theodore, Inez, Janelle, wow, now you've seen our three emerging artist finalists. I hope you're doing them mm, too. Aren't they incredible? Come on. I'm pleased to introduce Janet Sarbaugh, Vice President of Creativity at the Heinz Endowments. Janet has spent her career as a strong advocate and ambassador of arts and culture in the Pittsburgh region. Join me in welcoming Janet. Hi, good evening everyone. Janet Sarbaugh, the Vice President of Creativity Programs at the Heinz Endowments. And um, if you're thinking that there are too many uh, non-artist speakers tonight, you're probably right about that. But um, we can't help, help ourselves. And I can't help myself for two reasons. One, being with artists, even virtually, is the best thing in the world. And the other reason in my case is that I just had to be a part of the Carol Brown Awards this year because I'm a charter member of the Carol R. Brown fan club. I'm a charter member because of how very precious this woman is to our cultural community. Yes, Carol is most widely known for her incredible leadership of the Cultural Trust, but what is perhaps lesser known is how deep and how long term her commitment is to championing the region's individual artists. I am eternally grateful for her devotion to the arts. We've all benefited from it, whether we know it or not. And her work is a big part of the reason that we have the outstanding cultural community that we have today. To say more about Carol's work on behalf of the Heinz Endowments, I'm pleased to introduce another charter member of the CRB fan club, the president of the Heinz Endowments, Grant Oliphant. I'm Grant Oliphant, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Carol R. Brown Creative Achievement Awards. While we were hoping to all gather together tonight, the world had other plans. The difficult times, loss, and hardship of the past year and a half have revealed and magnified many truths in our lives. One of those truths, at least for me, and I suspect for many of us, is the importance of the arts and our deep appreciation of the role they play in both our individual lives and in our collective identity as a community, state, society, and country. Carol Brown, of course, has always had a laser sharp focus on the critical role the arts play in our region's progress, she envisioned how art can bring us together and build the power of community through the dynamics of creativity. The arts translate experiences, spark conversations, reveal sometimes hard truths. They remind us of beauty, often when we need it most, 
They allow us to laugh and to cry, to remember and to imagine, whether it's through the stunning power of poetry to lift and shift our vision, the magic of theater designs to transport us to other worlds, or evocations of identity that focus on belonging and displacement. Our region's artists tell us not only who we are, but also who we can be. I'm honored to be among those welcoming you to this year's awards and to join you in giving thanks, not only to Carol Brown herself, although please to Carol Brown herself, but also to our entire creative community for all they do to make our lives more thoughtful, truthful, and vibrant. We are flat out better because of you. We are more hopeful, more concerned, more connected, and I believe ultimately more human. And for that, well, that's what we're here to celebrate tonight. Thank you. When my brother was a teenager, he let some bullying kids from his high school persuade him to skip the day and invite them over to our house. He asked them to leave, but the boys refused. So my brother grabbed our father's shotgun and corralled them into the bathroom, the barrel pointed in their direction. I've always just been compelled to make things in language to try to work out trauma of the psyche the dark, ugly side of life that people weren't talking about. We find comfort when we see someone accessing that. When folks read my work, what I want them to be inspired toward is engaging their own creativity and trying to figure out something about themselves or their worlds. When I was nominated for this award, I was blown away that my community in Pittsburgh was noticing my work and seeing me as an artist. It just felt amazing. My brother held the gun luckily up toward the ceiling so that when his finger slipped and the mechanism went off, the bullet went through the roof of the house into the sky. To travel home now is to walk beneath the hole in the ceiling stuffed with newspaper from 1978. To return is also to encounter the past contorting its face so I can really feel it, its truncated force whispering a ghost voice into my ear. Thank you. Amen. Ooh, those videos of the artists are making me say, mm, and the video of Grant is just, I was over here saying, amen, that's right. Yes, this is art. Thank you, Grant. And what a great video of Don Lundy Martin, of course, one of our established artists nominees. There is such good energy tonight only going to get better. I'd like to introduce Celeste Smith, Senior Program Officer for Arts and Culture at the Pittsburgh Foundation. Like Janet Sarbaugh, Celeste is also a passionate advocate for the arts and artists in our region and nationally. Thank you so much, Joseph. And I'm glad you went before I did because that last video had me all in my emotions and I want to read the rest. Um, in preparing for this event, we thought so much about Carol R. Brown and her extraordinary contributions to Pittsburgh's arts and culture scene. Even in 2021, it is still rare for a woman to lead a large organization, art or otherwise, as Carol did, and as our current president and CEO, Lisa Schroeder does. What you may not know though, is that Carol is a founding mother providing no strings attached funding to individual artists, and that Lisa is an artist as well. To help us learn more about Carol and how she's been personifying authentic trust for artists for decades, we give you this video tribute from our president, CEO, and artist, Lisa Schroeder. I'm Lisa Schroeder, and I'm so happy to be here today to honor my friend and mentor, Carol Brown. This is the ninth time that our foundations have presented the Carol R. Brown Creative Achievement Awards. 
Carol has done immeasurable good for the arts and artists in this town, and she's ahead of her time. From the very beginning, Carol trusted artists. When the norm was still to provide artists with project funding, Carol established the Creative Achievement Awards at the Trust to provide artists with funding they could use however they saw fit. She showed us truly what it means to show up for and support the arts. The Trust today holds more than 1,300 events each year, all infused with public art. There are 13 theaters, venues, and galleries spread across 14 blocks downtown that serve a total of about 2 million people. I'm in no way exaggerating when I say that there might not be a cultural district without Carol, her vision, her dignity, and her sheer force of will. At every step of the way of every grand and ambitious project, she inspires excellence. And she made sure time and again that artists were recognized and rewarded for their creativity and talents. And so to honor Carol and her practice of trusting individual artists, our foundations resurrected the awards in 2012, renaming them the Carol R. Brown Creative Achievement Awards. Carol, we thank you for your determination. You continue to inspire us to elevate and support the most creative and innovative souls in the region by providing artists with unqualified support. Your dignity is unmatched. Your honesty is legendary. Your hospitality and your respect for artists are exemplary. You demonstrate to all of us that there are no limits on what is possible. There can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. Nelson Mandela. Movers and shakers, the people I know are the sculptors and creators of history, logging their existence in words that are written, some that are spoken, but all of it to record the current conditions of and contributions to humanity. The human family overflows with the gifts of creativity, ingenuity, destiny of divinity, yet few and far between. Youth are desperate for survival, thriving on the ways of the material, perspective tainted by society, poison pills, red or green, the choice is yours, but them not know what they do in a land of make-believe, digital manipulations making them believe that all's okay. And it seems no way to change their minds. Lies as real as the pain in their eyes. History makers, shapers of reality, painters of pictures we see. Public persona conceals identity of blessed beings, hides realness, reveals worldliness. Lost, gone astray in this present day and time. Rewind dimensions, bullets fly from the guns of henchmen, lynching lives before they're lived, spreading death till it's all that exists. Painters, shapers, teach the kids as the future lies closely under the lids of their blindfolded eyes. Unmask the truth so that it is no longer denied that greatness resides within the eye. It seems so few know as the lies are spoken loudly. Youth grow up wildly, discipline to be unruly, unaware of their true beauty. They need to see it and feel it reflected in society. Peace. The human eye can only see a tiny fraction of the entire spectrum of light. Within that physical spectrum, we've created all of these systems of oppression, anti-Blackness, racism. With my practice, I engage the ultraviolet spectrum, which is invisible to the human eye, to illuminate an alternative vision of the Black body. Blackness as a divine cosmic principle of the universe. I received an incredible note from a 60-year-old Black woman named Annette, who told me that her entire life She'd hated her body until she saw one of the images. She said that for the first time she could take a breath and felt good about herself. 
every Black person deserves to see themselves in this way. Through the artwork, I was trying to tell my own story and trying to actually create a space within the frame where I existed. I always encourage younger artists to dive into their own stories. Maybe if it's identity, maybe it's spiritually, maybe you're trying to figure out just like who you are and what your destiny is. How does your artwork tell that story and take you another step forward? My art career really was nourished here. So getting recognition from my home city and from Carol Brown is just an honor of a lifetime. We create stories through movement and sound, teaching other people about our world from our perspective. We would like our audiences to leave having felt something, having been moved. It doesn't always matter exactly what, and it doesn't mean that they're all gonna get the same thing out of it, but that there's something that wasn't there before. I am a Black female artist from Pittsburgh, and all that means something. This nomination for the Carol Brown Award makes me feel seen, makes me feel relevant. Being appreciated in your community means a lot. I would give other artists the advice to really be in touch with why you make your work. That's the reason why you do what you do, not because of anything else in the world and outside of yourself. As I grow older, creating art is more for myself. Even if I'm not dancing for the stage, even if I'm not dancing for anyone else, I should just do it no matter what. These awards are really making me scream and shout and snap and amen. Thank you. Thank you for moving us. Gosh. This year, the Heinz Endowments, the Pittsburgh Foundation, and the Opportunity Fund commission an award object that, in addition to the cash award, honorees will receive and possess forever. This year's award was designed by Adriana Ramirez, the 2019 established artist honoree who worked together with Dan Buchanan a glass artist at Studio Glass who brought her vision to life. Dan carries on the tradition of handmade decorative art glass. The award incorporates contemporary lighting against a backlit Pittsburgh skyline. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Adriana, for your collaboration in a beautiful award. I have the honor of introducing, introducing Cameron Barnett, the 2019 Carol R. Brown Creative Achievement Emerging Artist Awardee. Cameron is a poet, an educator, an editor, and author of The Drowning Boy's Guide to Water. His work explores the political, personal, and cultural nuances of the Black experience in North America. Let's welcome Cameron, who is here this evening to announce the 2021 Emerging Artist Awardee. Thank you, Joseph. First, I want to congratulate each of our Emerging Artist finalists. Your work stands out and your nomination and finalist designation make you a standout in the arts in our region. The definition of an Emerging Artist for the award this evening is one who is well-respected among local and regional peers, developing a body of work that is outstanding in both its current quality and exhibits potential for future growth and national exposure. You've all seen the videos about our three finalists, and I'd say they each, in their own way, epitomize the definition of an emerging artist. We have three finalists, and we have one oh. award. It kind of feels like the Oscars. <laughs> Holding the envelope in my hand that has the name of the 2021 Emerging Artist Awardee. Feels like there should be a drum roll. Oh, I don't have my oh, stakes. <laughs> okay, no more suspense. The 2021 Emerging Artist Awardee is 
Danielle Inez Walker. Ooh. Sorry for screaming. <laughs> is racing right now um i am standing the, the delayed response is my family downstairs um i'm standing next to two absolutely incredible artists and theodore and janelle janelle you know i stand you all day um theodore it's a blessing to be able to see your artistry as you can hear my family i gotta be quiet um i am uh, I gotta get this right. My family will beat me up. Um, first of all, I want to give all glory and honor to God for my gifts and my abilities. Um, I am a musician, singer, songwriter, producer, audio engineer, fire shorty, proud homeward resident. Um, but I'm also a survivor of trauma. Um, I just wrote a piece about some of my experiences. Um, and I would not still be standing here to be the musician, the creative I am without my village of love. Um, and I don't want to take up too much more time, but my village of love has always included incredible black women. It's why I advocate for black women. It's why I'm proud to be a black woman. Um, and I would like to dedicate this award um, in honor and memory of the black women in my tribe that I have lost. Um, um, so this year, uh, I just lost someone who means so much to me. Her name is Geraldine Coleman. Um, so I would love to accept this award, not only on behalf of my artistry and the nomination of my peers and everyone who wrote me in and supported me, but um, in memory of um, Miss Geraldine Coleman. I love you forever, baby. Thank you for everything you've done for me. I would not be the Black woman I am without your love. Um, and that's all I got before I start crying, y'all. Thank you so much. I love everybody. Peace. Congratulations, Inez. Ugh. And I want to uplift uh, with you, Geraldine Coleman. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you for announcing our first awardee. The 2019 Established Artist Honoree was Adriana Ramirez, and she's here this evening to announce this year's awardee. Adriana is a writer, book critic, and performance poet. She writes about violence, race, politics, gender, and culture in the U.S. and abroad. Adriana is an acclaimed Mexican-Colombian literary artist, independent scholar, and working mother who also is the co-founder of Asterix Journal. Please welcome Adriana. Thank you, Joseph. We have amazing finalists this evening, and I love that we have gotten to know each of them a bit tonight. While there is only one established artist awardee, you are all phenomenal and humbling. <laughs> the established artist category was designed to reflect an individual artist whose reputation among peers extends beyond the city and region. An individual who has contributed significantly to the field. Artists in this category have a body of work that is respected and validated by a wide spectrum of peers and critical review. This definition surely resonates with each of our emerging artist finalists. It must have been an incredibly difficult decision for the judging panel. I just want to say how much I respect the work of each of you, and we're all so pleased to honor you and your work tonight. Like Cameron, I also have an envelope that has the name of the 2021 Emerging Artist. Um, okay, we all want to know who it is, so let's just get to it. The 2021 Established Artist is, dramatic opening, Stacy R. Pearl. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe it. Thank you. Um, if I were, I'm so glad actually for this virtual world. If I were standing in front of you, I'd, I'd probably pass out. Um, I have some stuff down because I'm, this is not my forte here, but um, I would just first want to say, Joseph, thank you for, for acknowledging the indigenous ancestral lands where we live and create. And we're so, I'm blowing up right here. So fortunate <laughs> to be able to do so. 
Um, I'm the daughter of the late Elsie and Oscar Walters, and my sister and brother, Michelle and Oscar, are still alive and here with us. And my life partner is the notorious Herman Soy Sauce Pearl. Um, thank you, Heinz Endowments, Opportunity Fund, and Pittsburgh Foundation, not only for this amazing award, but for the continued support I get since I've been here. I've been, I moved here from New York in 21 years ago. And since the first moment I got here, there was, I just felt like there was so much support for the arts and it's, it's been that way ever since. So I'm speechless with gratitude. Um, some of the other institutions that have been like home to me since I've been here include the Kelly Strayhorn Theater, the August Wilson Center, um, Alumni Theater Company, the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts and Media. Um, and then, you know, there are other places outside of Pittsburgh, but we're not gonna talk about them, right? <laughs> um, thank you to the other nominees. It's wonderful to be in the company of such beautiful people and incredible talent. Um, I now have a list. I did this at four o'clock in the morning. There may be some names missing and I apologize in advance. It's also not in any order in particular, but I was just thinking about all the people and that I've, that have stood for me and been in contact and, or taught me something, whether it's, whether I know them well or don't know them very well at all. And I see them making work and doing creative things in the area. And I'll start with um, Dawn and Michael. Shirley, I'm just going to run it down really fast. Shirley, and they're all first names, no order. Shirley, Ayana, Dana, Beth, Nicole, Sadie, Sandy, Anna, Taylor, Chrissy, Ronnie, Felicia, Aaron, Kantara, Seth, Hallie, Josh, Charlize, Tyra, Alexa, Demaya, Shakira, Shakira, Lynn, Joshua, Erica, Teresa, Scott, Erica, Olivia, Kololo, Dory, Alicia, Jill, Blaine, Janet, Jake, Tiffany, Karen, Celeste, Erica, Mama Katia too, Jessica, Kotoko, Disha, Allie, Ben, Sarika, Dan, Richard, Joy, Joy Marie, Janice, Anquinique, Daryl, Adam, Bekazela, Latre, Chandler, Lindsay, Raven, Simon, Joseph again, I love you, Kyle, Rosa, Ruth, Michelle, Tim, Elaine, Barbara, Nicole, Lenore, Nicole, Kathleen, Aisha, Honey, Wavy, Adil, Rachel, and Jami, Sehu, Yvette, Janera, Lisa, Lane, Dusty, Bren, Lila, Jasmine, Jamie, Michelle, Amber, Ryan, all my doctors, Yash, Gwen, Chris, Isabel, Vanessa, Kim, Tarane, I'm almost done. Marimba, Bill, Deva, Sidra, Alicia Dawn, Lauren, Miss Tina, Naomi, Yona, Brian, Chris, James, Sandra, Sh Chandra, Sean, Sean, I'm sorry, I can't speak, but I know you know who you are. Aisha, Megan, Carolina, Bill, Donnell, and Ms. Carol R. Brown. Thank you. Lastly, but certainly not least, I would like to say thank you. Words cannot express how much gratitude I have for our lives every day. Um, Herman Pearl, everything that matters in life is magnified by your presence in mind. Oh. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Oh my gosh, this reminds me that when artists have a platform, they bring so many other folks with them. We are all here. We are all here with each other. I wanna congratulate Stacy Pearl and Inez and congratulations to our finalists. In the words of James Baldwin, this is why art is important. Art would not be important if life were not important. 
and life is important. Most of us, no matter what we say, are walking in the dark, whistling in the dark. Nobody knows what is going to happen to them from, moment, from one moment to the next, or how one will bear it. This is irreducible, and it's true for everybody. Now it is true that the nature of society is to create among its citizens an illusion of safety, but it is also absolutely true that the safety is always necessarily an illusion. Artists are here to disturb the peace. They have to disturb the peace, otherwise chaos. Thank you to our hosts for the evening, the Heinz Endowments, the Pittsburgh Foundation, and the Opportunity Fund. Let's look forward to gathering in person in 2022 to once again celebrate the legacy of Carol Brown and honor the work of emerging and established artists in our region. Until then, be safe. And please continue, continue to support the arts and artists. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening.